Hello and good morning. Today we are going to talk about chromosomal theory. As we said that the genetic uh, science uh, is relatively new science. Uh, in 1902, the two scientists, Sutton and Bovary, had reached the chromosomal theory principles, which are chromosomes are found in somatic cells in homologous pairs, or what we call 2N, as we can see here in the karyotype, and gametes contain half the number of the chromosomes in somatic cells due to meiosis, where the homologous pairs are segregated into two equal sets assorted into gametes. So the gametes, or the sex uh, cells, contain half the number of the somatic cells, which is 2N, so gametes contain only N. Each pair of chromosomes behave independently at its transmission to gamete. So, for example, if we have this cell, this is a somatic cell, or this is a cell that will be divided into gametes. And if we say that the red chromosomes are, uh, uh, sorry, chromosomes that were coming from the mother, and the blue ones coming from the father. What happens during meiosis is that some of the chromosomes coming from the mother com goes to one cell with some chromosomes that are coming from the father. Okay? Or the other way around. Or all chromosomes coming from the father come together and all chromosomes coming from the mother come together. So there is no rule. If I have, for example, chromosome, uh, a pair of chromosome, one of them coming from my mother and one of them coming from my father, and another chromosome, pair of chromosome that have a chromosome coming from my mother and one coming from my father, the ones that coming from my father can segregate together and form one gamete, or mix with some from my mother's and form a gamete, or all coming from my mother form a gamete. There is no rule. So this is what we call behaves independently. So each chromosome act on its own. They don't go with their origin. They don't look for the, the blue ones and go together, or they don't look for the, the red ones and go together or mix and match. There is no rule at all. Behaves independently. So what happens during fertilization or the fusion of the male gamete with the female gamete? The diploid number of chromosomes return. So we have here an egg producing cell and a sperm producing cell. So these are two gonad cells that are going to become gametes. So here in this case, are these cells diploid or haploid? They are diploid. As we can see, they have pair. Okay? So in the gamete, each chromosome goes into one cell. So these are ova and these are sperms. What happens here? They are haploid. After fertilization or fusion between one sperm and one ovum, what happens again? The, haplo the diploid state is returned again. Okay, so we start with 2N, meiosis causes N, fertilization causes the return of the diploid state or 2N. And genes are located on the chromosomes and one chromosome may carry hundreds of genes. Not all chromosomes are genes. Genes are only some sequence that occurs on the uh, DNA or the chromosome. Mendel we can say that Mendel is the father of the genetic science. 
and we will try to interpret Mendel's law according to the chromosomal theory. In 1860, Grigor Mendel, who was a priest in a church, performed some experience on pea, plant, and found that each trait is controlled by a pair or two genetic factors. Later, they were called genes because the word gene, we didn't come up with the word gene until 1902. So Mendel discovered genes but didn't give them the names. They, they called them genetic factors. Okay? So these genetic factors may be dominant or recessive. And we know what is dominant and what is recessive. Dominant means it dominates the other gene. If it occurs, its action will appear. Its effect will appear no matter what. Recessive means that it will be dominated by another gene unless we don't have a dominant gene. If both genetic factors or both genes are recessive, their effect will appear. Each pair of contrasting traits, dominant and recessive, are called allelomorphic characteristics or alternative characteristics. What does this mean? In this case, in the pea plant flower, for example, we have a white gene and a purple gene. The white and the purple characteristics are called allelomorphic characteristics. So, for example, if we have a gene that is responsible for the height of a plant, for example, gene dominant that is responsible for the long plant and the recessive gene responsible for the short plant. So, the long and the short plants or characteristics are called allelomorphic characters two contrasting traits, black and white traits, long and short traits. And as we just said, a dominant gene is expressed in a person or an individual, it doesn't have to be a person of course, any living individual who has only one copy of that gene. So one gene is enough to appear the characteristic. So, if we give the dominant gene a capital letter, the effect of the dominant gene is expressed when we have homozygous, both genes are capital, are R capitals, or heterozygous, one capital and one small, because one is enough. On the other hand, a recessive gene is opposed to a dominant gene. It cannot appear unless the two copies of the gene are present. So one is not enough. So can we have a heterozygous recessive characteristic? Of course not. Because if we have one capital and one small, one dominant and one recessive, what will appear? The dominant or the recessive characteristic? Of course the dominant. So, recessive genes only appears, or recessive characteristics only appear in homo, uh, uh, homozygous. We cannot have a heterozygous recessive gene. We need to note a few symbols that we are going to use a lot in genetic analysis. This represents male. And this is females. X means mating or coupling or marrying. First generation, when we put the letter P means parent and one means the parents of the genetic, uh, uh, sorry, is the parent of the first generation. G means gamete and F means offspring. The second generation we uh, replace number one with number two. So parents of the second generation is P2, gametes from the second generation are G2, and offspring of the second generation are, <coughs> 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 
sorry F2 and genes are usually given a letter where the capital letter dominate the small letter so always if we have a capital letter or a small letter that means a capital represents the dominant gene and the small letter represents the recessive allele allele is a characteristic two alleles are contrasting characteristics like tall and short okay so R capital means dominant gene and the recessive gene will be given R small it doesn't of course has to be R any capital letter represents a dominant gene and any small letter represents a recessive gene so let's try to interpret Mendel's first law or what we call law of segregation when crossing two pure or homo homozygous individuals meaning that both gene in each individual are homogeneous exactly the same homozygous one bears a dominant characteristic and the other bears the recessive characteristic the dominant character appears in 100 percent of the generation like for example in pea flowers the color purple is dominant over the white per, uh, the white color so what happens if a purple flowered pea mated with a white flowered pea but we need to know that this purple flower was homozygous was pure both genes were dominant so for example if we have this purple and we know that the purple color is dominant so we give it the letter R capital mated with a, a white flower and the white flower is exactly a recessive characteristic so for the purple it's pure it's dominant so what the genes will be represented by RR exactly and the white can we have R capital R small it's a recessive genes <clears throat> so they need to be both recessive so it's r small r small so this is the parents of the first generation what will the gametes be the gametes we know that they will segregate so each one will give us two gametes that can only be r can we have any other options can we have a gamete with r small of course not and here what is our only option exactly r small so let's mate what will happen we will get exactly r capital r small and this is the first generation and what is the character here will it be purple or will it be white of course it will be purple why because we have a dominant gene and a recessive gene which character will appear the dominant genes character or the recessive genes character of course the dominant gene character which is the purple color so was Mendel right when he said that all the offspring of the first generation when we made a pure dominant character with a recessive character will have the dominant character 100 percent are purple do we have any flowers here that are white do we have any other possibility in this mating no so exactly mendel was right that the dominant character or the purple flower will appear in 100 percent of the first generation what's next the second generation in a second in the second generation both dominant and recessive character characteristics or characters will appear in second generation with a ratio of three to one so what will happen we will get two flowers from the first generation we will make them together and what will we will see we will see that 
both dominant and recessive characters will appear in a ratio of three to one so if we have four flowers three will be purple and one will be white so from the previous example what happens if two of the offspring of the first generation are crossed or mated let's see so parents of the second generation we have two purple that are homozygous or heterozygous exactly they are heterozygous because they are not pure they are the result of crossing one pure dominant with one pure recessive so we get what these are the offspring of the first generation and now they are going to be the parents of the second generation let's get the gametes what are the options here how many options do we have two three one two we can have r capital or r small and here exactly the same so let's cross so the second generation what is the offspring we can combine this one with this one what will happen we will have r capital r capital this is purple or white purple of course pure purple and we can cross this with that what we will have r capital r small purple or white we have a dominant gene and the recessive gene it will be purple because the purple color dominates the white color what else can we have we can have this with that yes r capital r small color purple exactly like this what is our last option we can have the r small combined with the r small here what we will have we will have r small r small what is the color here is it purple of course not we don't have the purple gene is it white yes and white as we can see only appeared in a homogeneous case or what we call a homozygous so mendel was right again that both dominant and recessive characters appeared in the second generation with the ratio of three to one three purples three dominant to one white or one recessive so let's see mendel's second law or law of independent assortment when crossing two pure or homozygous individuals bearing two or more different allelomorphic characteristics do you remember what was the meaning of allelomorphic characters allelomorphic characters means two characters that are contrasting black and white tall and short thin and fat purple and white we cannot have a flower that is purple and white at the same time we cannot have a plant that is tall and short at the same time but we can have a plant that is tall and white or short and white okay so if we have two plants are crossed with pure hemozygous two different allelomorphics so for example one allelomorphic character is tall and short and the second is black and white what will happen each pair is inherited independently what what does this mean it doesn't it it means that the character of being tall or short doesn't have any relation it's completely independent on the character that is being black or white so i can have a tall black or a tall white a short black or a short white they are independent they don't depend on each other what will happen in the first generation the two dominant characters will appear in 100% of the first 
a generation. Let's see an example of that. The pea seeds ha can have a yellow color, which is dominant color, or green, which is uh, the recessive characteristic, and can be smooth in shape or wrinkled. So we give the yellow color capital Y because it's dominant, and we give the green color small y because it's the recessive character, and the smooth shape is the dominant character, we give it S capital, and the wrinkled is the, sm the recessive, so we give it a small s. Let's see what are the possibilities when crossing a plant with yellow smooth seed with another with green wrinkled seed, and we must know that they are both homozygous. So the parent, the first parent, we have yellow smooth. Yellow is Y capital and S capital is for smooth. So for the yellow color, we have two chromosomes for the yellow color, which is YY. And for the smooth, we have another two chromosomes or another two genes that carry the smooth characters, which is S capital S capital. So what is, the, how can we call this? It's Y capital, Y capital, S capital, S small, S capital, sorry. So what happens if we mate it or cross it with a green wrinkled P? Can you tell me? What are the chromosomes here? Exactly, Y small, Y small for the green color, S small, S small for the wrinkled characteristic. Gametes, will we have Y, Y, S, S? Of course not, because these can combine together. Y and S are two different genes two different parts of the chromosomes, so they must come together. So we will have one gamete that contain Y capital, S capital. Okay, do we have any other option? Can we have a gamete with YY? Of course not, because this, these are the homologous pair, they must segregate. And SS? Of course not. We must have two different characters together in a gamete. Okay? Okay, let's move on to this. What will be the gamete? Y small, S small. Do we have any other option? Can we? Do we have here Y capital or S capital? So it's our only option. Y small, S small. Let's mate. What we will have, let's start with the Y's. We will have Y capital, Y small. And the S's, we will have S capital, S small. So we will have Y capital, Y small, S capital, S small. About the color, what will, will the color be? Forget about the S's now. Y's. Y capital dominates Y small and Y capital stands for yellow. So what will be the color? Exactly, yellow. And S capital and S small, wrinkled or not wrinkled. S capitals dominate S small and S capital stands for smooth. So we will have a yellow smooth seed. Was Mendel right? Yes, of course he was. 100% of the ver first generation carried the two dominant characters, which were yellow smooth. What will happen in the second generation? If we take two seeds from the first generation and made them together or crossed them together, what we will get? Mendel suggests that both the two dominant, two dominant and two recessive characters will appear in the second generation in a ratio of 9 
to three to three to one what does this mean let's try to understand it in the example but we need to know that the assortment of genes is independent when genes are carried on different chromosomes because as we said in the second uh, in the third sorry a rule of the theory of the chromosomal theory we said that they act independently individually okay so when we have two chromosomes we we can have the two chromosomes coming from the father coming together or one from the mother and one from the father or both from the mother come together they are independent from the previous example, what will happen if two of the offspring of the first generation are crossed? Let's see. So the parent of the second generation are the offspring of the first generation. So we have two yellow uh, smooth seeds that carry the genetic information Y capital Y small, S capital S small. Both are the same because both are coming from the same uh, parents what will happen here what are our options what are our gametes for this gamete for the gamete from this seed what can we have we can have we need to have one y and y s so tell me what can we have we can have y capital s capital or we can have Y capital S small or we can have Y small S capital or Y small S small yes here what can we have we can have exactly the same we can have Y capital S capital Y capital S small Y cap Y small S capital and Y small S small let's cross if this crossed with that what will we get so what will be the second generation let's start with this possibility first y capital with uh, s capital with y capital s capital we will get this structure and what is the color exactly yellow smooth y capital capital s capital small yes yellow or green yellow smooth or wrinkled smooth let's continue and here exactly let's move on to the second row what will happen here y capital y capital s capital s small hmm yellow smooth let's see what happened here y capital y capital s small s small what is the color yellow and what is the shape will it be wrinkled or will it be smooth yes it will be wrinkled why because we have two recessive genes here let's continue yeah okay Hmm. Y capital, Y small, S small, S small. Exactly like this. It's also wrinkled, yellow wrinkled, because we have S small, S small. Okay. Here, Y capital, Y small, S capital, S capital. Yellow smooth. Here, yellow smooth. Here. Ha. Huh here y small y small s capital s capital what is the color here exactly green because we have two recessive genes so the recessive character will appear and what about the shape will it be smooth or uh, wrinkled smooth because both genes are dominant so you will have smooth green here exactly the same smooth green okay so 
last row. Hmm. Yellow smooth here. What is the color? It's yellow. And what is the shape? Exactly. It's wrinkled. So it's yellow wrinkled. Let's see this one. It's Y small. Y small. S capital S small. So is it yellow or green? Green. Is it smooth or wrinkled? Wrinkled. Ex uh, sorry, smooth. Smooth. S capital. So it's smooth. Okay. Okay. Let's see the last one. Y small, Y small, S small, S small. So what is this? The color will be exactly green. And the shape will be huh? exactly. It will be green wrinkled. So let's see if Mendel was right. Mendel said that we have all the characteristics, both dominant and recessive characters will appear in a ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. What is the meaning of 9? 9 represent both dominant characters. What are the both dominant characters? Yellow smooth. So let's count how many yellow smooth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Exactly. So this is the first one. Both dominant is 9. 3. What is 3? 3 is one dominant and one recessive. So it's yellow wrinkled. Let's see how many yellow wrinkled. 1, 2, 3. The third number was also 3. So what is the other 3? They will have the reverse dominant and uh, recessive characters so they will be green smooth let's count one two three green smooth and one represents the two recessive characters which is wrinkled and green exactly so Mendel was right yes of course he was right we have nine yellow smooth three yellow wrinkled three green smooth and one green wrinkled that's it for me today hope you enjoyed our lesson and we will continue with our genetic informations next time have a great day